Hey, what is up, guys? It is Dragonfly Todd here coming at you with a brand new video. Today, this is the day that I'm releasing the Q&A video. And I actually did have some audio problems, some microphone issues. And on, like, around the 23 mark, the audio is going to get switched to the left side because there is a buzzing noise on the right side of the headphones. And I don't know what the problem is. Maybe I can look up some videos and try to fix it. But I think it has to do with the, what I used to record. I, I did have to go into the video and edit all of my questions in up until the 23 minute mark because my microphone wasn't on in the recording software that I use. So you guys are just gonna, I guess, have to deal with the kind of choppy-ish questions, but I'm gonna try like to match the questions with the answers to the best of my ability. Thankfully, they did most of the talking, but without further ado, I'm gonna fake introduce myself and then say hey this is you know this is your time to introduce yourself guys okay here it is the q a uh i guess i'll go first i'm the new community manager beach ball uh i handle all sorts of customer service type things uh social media pr type stuff and uh if anyone has a question uh, i'm your go-to guy for that yeah i'm uh you guys know me i'm motown i'm the uh, team producer I, I basically assign everybody their tasks and, uh, and then finally, we have Cyber. Yeah, uh, Parrot is going to make it, uh, John. So I'm trying to represent here as a developer. Uh, I am a game developer. I've been here for about a month now. And uh, so far, so good. I haven't uh, thrown all my hair out yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so this question is going to be like for Beach Ball or any other new employee. It's. How have you acclimated to the workflow sure. of Absolutely. Asylum Entertainment, and how did you hear about the up-and-coming company? Like, kind of, what what did you go through, and how did you hear about it? You know, how did you get hired, or whatever? Uh, well, for me, I guess I'll start. Um, I found out about it on Indeed, actually. It was a job listing for community manager, and then I had to do a bunch of research on what identity was, and I was, like, super captivated by it. So I was like, whoa. I gotta try and get this. Um, in terms of adjusting to the workflow, uh, it's a lot of keys I have to manage. I'm basically, uh, I have all these different social media profiles I have to keep track of and make sure that they're up to date, safe and secure. Uh, but it's it's been a lot of fun and I, I'm really starting to get the hang of it now. Yeah, um, as for me, Cyber, I, uh, I heard about the game a while back, but I never actually thought that I'll be working on it and uh, randomly found a job posting on Indeed for new developers uh, uh, required in Ottawa, Canada, where I work. So I one thing led to another and uh, I just found myself uh, challenging myself to uh, get the job and eventually got here. Woo. I always find that amazing that you had you had at least seen or heard of the game before, and then just suddenly one day a job posting you hear about it yeah yeah in your in your local area. Okay, That's so cool. uh, next question, Motown, are you there with them? Yeah, and also like, how has the new office building helped with kind of bringing everyone together? Oh, uh, Motown is not. Unfortunately, not yeah. yet. We're going to try and get them out here, but the, the, the paperwork to fly someone out from a different country to work in another country is, is very, uh, very, yeah, the, very lengthy. The, the work visa process is a, uh, is a really challenging uh, thing to go through. It takes about 7 to 12 months to process fully, and uh, that's what we're in the process of doing now. Yeah, especially Canada and the U.S., I guess. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. But as for uh, as for how we've been integrating here, uh, I think we've all found each other as a big fan. First day, we we're all making fun of each other, uh, uh, <laughs> driving each other home and whatnot. So it's like we've we've gone immediately acclimated to the fact that we're part of a big coherent team. And uh, for me, that's uh, that's something that I haven't yet had a chance to meet in another company where we all click immediately so I'm, I'm very excited for the amount of work that we can get out of the team mm -hmm. and one of the advantages of having an office is uh, while we have lots of people that work remotely if there's ever an issue or you ever have to get a hold of somebody uh, being in physical presence is really great for troubleshooting or just simply asking a question so it's really sped up uh, workflow in that way it's, it's been really nice Definitely. Just ask how many times I've thrown pieces of paper at Brandon. 
Okay. Okay, so what would you say the biggest reason is as to why the game actually got delayed? Like, what is the biggest thing? Uh, so definitely early on was the biggest uh, gap in, in lack of production. Uh, when we didn't have the programmers that really knew uh, uh, how to solve some of the issues that we were facing, because we were doing a lot of learning on the job back then. And until we hired Cyber and even Sewn uh, before before um, the like we we were just struggling trying to get over each hurdle uh working on back-end programming issue hmm. yeah but uh now that so and so is uh, marthalion for all you forum users uh once we had our incredible so guy uh, showing up and uh, now i joined the team and we have a new guy andrew as well the team has been expanding quite uh, quite fast. I think it tripled in size already in the last month and uh, uh, just that alone makes it so that we have more uh, brain power to actually share information. Sometimes you get, if you're working on your own or one of two people only, you sometimes get into hurdles where you don't even know what to look for in order to solve your problem. But once you actually have more hands on deck to actually work on something, you immediately know where to look at and what to look at. Mm -hmm. And so far, it's it's been exponentially faster and faster. A lot faster than how we started yeah i think identity started it with maybe just three guys to be honest so yes yeah. it's, it's really nice to see uh you know an office a big uh, work group obviously we aren't like comparing ourselves to AAA studios like ea or U ubisoft but for an indie dev studio that's tackling an mmo we're really getting there so would you say identity is making a lot of progress uh, yeah, it's it's definitely getting up there. Yeah, and we're we're really thankful to our community and our developers that have joined our little family here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say the three biggest factors of identity are? This is mostly for Motown. <sighs> Ooh, um, I would say uh, player customization, law and order, and uh, housing. Mm. Um, I, I that's that's what that's where my my main three things because i think those are critical to the the social environment that identity introduces it's a it's a it's very much a social mmo and those three factors uh play right into it um player housing because uh you know that's that's a that's that's where your player is going to be living the entire time that you're you're in identity from start to finish you know that's that's mm -hmm. that's uh, it, it is quintessential to your player identity. Yeah, and uh, well, I agree with uh, Motown on this. My only difference for me would be uh, customization, law and order, and for me, it would be role playing just to, oh. uh, instead of housing because for me, I feel like. Uh, the way that we're developing everything, we're always trying to make it as generic as possible to allow the maximum amount of role play possible from the people themselves. We want to allow uh, everyone to use their creativity, uh, use their imagination and actually create different games and give different lifestyles in the game with the tools that we give them and not just restrict them to that one storyline that every other game has or one generic uh, problem to solve. So we actually make you want to create your own problems so that you solve them yourselves. Yeah, very, very well said. Yeah, uh, I definitely like to add to the law enforcement part of it because uh, it's very hard to describe what identity is to some people because it's just so unique. Uh, some like hearing it being kind of like a cops and robbers game at heart but with so much more to offer because you will get those uh, power struggles between enforcement and criminals but it's inside of a world where you know you can own a house you can have these social interactions you can own a business there's all these different things that really set it apart from other games so um it's very dynamic in that sense because uh, so many different scenarios can come up because it's not just uh you know some sort of matchmaking game where it's you know red versus blue it's there might be uh, with the stress system. There, there, there could be people uh, looking for mischief around any corner. And if there's some big scenario like a bank heist, uh, you might get caught in that crossfire. Even if you were, you know, just doing a. A, a run to the bank you know it's it's kind of crazy so it's uh very unfortunately it's very lifelike that's the, <laughs> that's the thing. 
but yes, the uh, power struggle between uh, police and criminals is definitely going to be a big thing in uh, identity, and in, in my opinion, at least. Definitely, and with that said, even uh, you don't have to participate in that either. You can live your life as a normal civilian, stay out of all of that, mm -hmm. and and be completely uh, legit in the game. Yeah, you can immerse yourself with any type of storyline you want. It's it's a matter of picking your own uh, path and just going on it. Pretty much real life like, except hmm. that you actually uh, have the uh, you can actually start a new life uh, with uh, different uh, beginnings than your current one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. So is there any like specific thing that you can tell me that'll be kind of exclusive to my channel, you know, that, <laughs> I, that'll be kind of in this Q&A, my big headliner? Hmm. So I, I don't know uh, that there is specifically anything new that we haven't told our community, but uh, there are a few things that are very little known to the community. And one of those things being um, something like the museum that players can uh, find artifacts throughout the world and submit to the museum and have their 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 artifacts displayed there with their name uh, under the, on a plaque next to the artifact. Oh. In indicating that uh, that you that player was the one that found that artifact first, and uh, I I don't even know if these guys here in the chat knew about that one. I I heard about it. I knew about the art side, but not the artifact part of it. Yeah, it's a it's it's one of those little known features that we don't talk about a whole lot, but it's something that I'm really excited for. Yeah, yeah. sounds cool. For me, uh, basically, I, I, I noticed that we've been very transparent with the community, which is why it's really hard to find something to give you an exclusive right now. Uh, but uh, uh, I guess from my from what I've been working on recently, it's in the little things that I that I added to the game. Like, in, uh, uh, for example, I wanted to mimic my uh, my relationship with my girlfriend in terms of how we eat food. I order food, she eats it. Uh, so it's basically these little things like that. You can actually have these kind of <laughs> dynamics in the game, where you order you order things and you walk away to the washroom and someone can come by and eat it before it spoils. We actually oh have food that can spoil out in real life, depending on timers. And uh, my my personal favorite thing is the fact that you can sit in a chair without dying 14 times in a row. But uh, <laughs> oh, that's my own storyline. <laughs> life of a dev, huh? Life of a dev. But no, no, go ahead. Yeah, we're good. So what is the hiring process like in Asylum? Like, how do you choose your developers, etc., etc.? Et um, <laughs> you, you know, so so the, pro the, the hiring process really isn't that prestigious. Uh, a lot of what we do, if we're looking for, it depends on the type of job that we need to fill. Um, if we're looking for an artist, we literally just scour the web looking for uh, portfolios that match the, the quality that we're looking for. Um, if you're a programmer, we need you to be on site, you know, uh, where, where our company... Uh, um, where we where, work. Yeah, where we work on, on site. And uh, uh, so we just list locally there in that area. And, and like, like Cyber was saying earlier, that's how he learned about the job. I, I can provide like a decent amount of uh, uh, insight on how I got hired because sure. uh, uh, I remember that I had to do a decent amount of testing, things like C++, blueprints, and uh, just general software engineering, computer science question. And it was the hardest exam I've had to do in my entire life. And I think I the first time around, I wasn't paying attention that there was a timer. I was... <laughs> Uh -oh. uh, and and then and then I wrote I wrote John saying so John I only did one question out of the <laughs> twenty five that were there. And John oh. was very very like that's the thing about uh, about Asylum in terms of uh, the developers is that we're all understanding of how real life kicks in and John was basically like okay sure go ahead do it again and then we did it again and then I spent two weeks uh, studying a language that I've never learned before just for this job and i passed it so it's pretty i wouldn't say it's pretty hardcore to get in but it, we try to set the bar just a bit enough high uh where we actually feel like being part of the team is an achievement of its own 
Yeah, I, you know, on that note, actually, I actually remember John coming to me, like giving me basically a day by day, telling me that you, you've been uh, learning all these different languages that, that were required, and he was really excited about that too. And uh, and I, I guess that's I guess that's when he knew that you were the the right person for the job because you went out of your way to learn yeah. things that you didn't. Uh, being uh, for me, I I got uh, I got back to John saying, "Hey, this is what I did," and I sent him I think like a wall of text, like twenty lines worth of things that I did over over the last week, and I expected John to either completely disregard what I just said or just say K and and walk away, but no, John replied to me with an even bigger wall of things to focus on, and and that's where I knew that I belonged in this company because the amount of interaction for the hiring process was unbelievable it's not just basically let's throw in uh, an hr community and just say you you randomly you and then throw in a computer in there just to look at skill sets no it was actually a very personal one-on-one -on -one, uh relationship you can say between a hiring manager and the the candidate which for me felt like uh like something that i've never seen in another company before yeah, and uh, I guess just to go off of that, uh, really the top dog is experience. Education is great, but um, if someone has something to show that really demonstrates their excellence and why they're exceptional, then uh, if they're in the area, like just go for it and, and apply. Oh yeah, but you you must have a good sense of humor. If you don't have a good sense of humor, you're not gonna tolerate me at work. <laughs> okay. Just letting you know right now. <laughs> yeah. So has there been any hiccups with Spatial OS yet, or have you guys even really integrated that in? Or So what's going on with that? Is there anything? Um, the, there haven't really been many hiccups yet. Uh, there, there's still a long road ahead of us for that. But um, it, it really hasn't been too much of a challenge implementing Spatial OS so far. Especially that uh, I think Spatial OS is supposed to kick in in Module 2, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, Mota. Yeah. So, so right now, the priority is more to focus on getting Town Square ready, up and going. And uh, so uh, we, we are currently using our own servers, I think, or something in the cloud. Uh, but yeah, once once that's out, then Spatial OS will kick in and it will be, yeah. it will be something. And and on that too, uh, improbable. The the company that produces Spatial OS, they've been incredibly accommodating and helpful too. If you have a a technical question or, or you even need additional help, they will actually lend a, a person from their company to to assist with implementing things that you're having trouble with. So they're they're really cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So uh, next question. So. Have you guys ever run into anything in development that really stumped you sure. and then you kind of um, just you thought of a crazy idea and it actually turned out working just perfectly? Like I know that there's some things that happen like that, especially in development. <laughs> <laughs> have you never have you ever heard of development? Nothing ever works on the first try. <laughs> this is part of it. <laughs> I don't know if you have a specific mot uh, example, Motown, but uh, when I asked John about this, he, he said probably the ballistic system because uh, uh, it, I don't know if you want to talk about well, anything, but well, I can handle that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh um, basically, uh, they implemented a, a basics physics system that allowed uh, users or allowed them to put certain drag on bullets and make different bullets behave differently pretty much um they got some values john got some values from a public like police ballistics value sheet or something and he basically just plugged in the numbers to the math and he ended up getting a very realistic uh bullet physics system which is great yeah things things with that system really just kind of fell into place uh, perfectly uh but most of all i would i would just like to point out that unreal engine itself uh, was was like this perfect solution to this problem that we weren't certain in the beginning how we were going to to solve uh, Unreal Engine. It feels like everything they they do is built for identity. You know, it's just it's just oh. we couldn't have chosen a better engine for for making this game. Awesome. So, do you have any news on whether or not this game will be able to be ported to console? If so, what news can you bring us? Um, a lot of people have been asking. 
Um, we we definitely get this question a lot. A um, lot. Yeah. It's no, no. It's 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 good. Um, it's definitely something we want to make happen if it's at all possible. Um, I mean, module one is even going to be controller friendly. Uh, while we're building this game from the ground up on the PC, we're keeping in mind console or controller users at the very least. So certain UI will be rather. Uh, it, it, it it'll play rather nice with controllers and. Um, Really, it just comes down to um, how many hoops you have to jump through if licensing is an all-on issue, and uh, so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah, we, we've we've built the UI also to be compatible with controller use because uh, we we really went into this development cycle expecting to make it for consoles too, but we we even at this point we're still not certain if we'll get one hundred percent if uh, that'll happen. You know, because we just don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of even just not even just the UI, but even the gameplay itself, it's uh, I, I personally feel that it's very controller friendly and console friendly uh, for to set up for portability. But I think the biggest problem will actually be the licensing of it. Uh, that exactly. on its own is going to be like a challenge to actually get proper licensing and uh, and basically be able to port it to begin with. But if that's done, then I, I this is my personal opinion hope, or... hope yeah opinion or hopeful insight is that i don't see why we wouldn't do it on a console because i know i want to for example hmm. mm -hmm. cool so how are the drug mechanics going to work like in town square will we be able to sell cook you know distribute take them how is the drugs gonna mechanics going to work in uh that module or what module will we see that in Mm. Want me to take this one, Motown? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I asked John a bit about this, and he said uh, you might be able to take drugs in Town Square, but there won't be any sort of drug production or trafficking until the full game. Uh, you can drive around and race in the third module, and in the second module you'll probably be seeing uh, drug bust encounters to help uh, set up the scenario for the SWAT for that sort of engagement. Um, we definitely want to try and make those sorts of encounters and scenarios in Module 2 uh, really good so we can actually instead of reinventing the wheel we can maybe uh bring them over into the full game not one-to-one -one, obviously but we definitely want to uh, uh make it easier on ourselves and as i just said you know not make entirely new scenarios if we can avoid it just make a really good solid module two and move uh, some of that stuff into the final game yeah and and all of the content that's produced for every single one of the models uh, modules uh will be moved into identity hmm. So the same person asks if we can own banks and if there will be a mechanic of charging people in interest and can you be a loan shark? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no on both accounts. Uh, you can't own any banks. Uh, that's all like uh, computer owned. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can't own a. You can't be a loan shark either. I, I mean, you can role play as one certainly. Uh, but uh, there is actual loan shark uh, AI in the game for criminals who aren't able to access normal venues or, or uh, uh, ATMs. Oh. They they're forced to use the loan sharks to get their money. <laughs> yeah, should have you should have went with that when you were asking about things that I didn't know. <laughs> there you go. I didn't. Know. Yeah. I, I was always wondering like how is he going to cash in all these prizes and now I know. <laughs> Nice. Okay, um, how will detectives be able to figure out who committed a crime, like a robbery, for example? Would it be, uh, re like, reported to the police and they would go do fingerprint work, or how would that work? How would that work? Yeah, so uh, certain crimes will automatically flag you uh, as a criminal, uh, and other crimes, lesser misdemeanors, will require a, a witness. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. If if you are a murderer, uh, you will be flagged in the database as a criminal. But it doesn't mean the police can just automatically fi figure out where you're at on the spot. Uh, they'll have to bring in a cop acting as a detective to collect the evidence, and then bring the evidence um, back to the, the the forensics lab at the police station 
and uh, process that evidence, and then they'll be able to track you, your general location, not your exact location. Okay. Cool. Here's uh, the last couple questions that I have, and then I, I gotta switch over to this Discord screenshot that I have from another guy. Um, Ooh. How much faster will the newer modules be out? And is it gonna be years before we even see the data? I can I can start with the first part about this. Uh, I can tell you that the, the other modules like two, three, and even mid are just going to actually be a lot faster. Yeah. They'll be out a lot faster than module one, because module one right now we're serve it's serving as a uh, as the base as the infrastructure I, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. To everything that is identity, and if that works, if that works, and we have a smooth to smooth transition from there uh we will actually have modules two and three out a lot faster than module one it's it's kind of why module one is taking so long it's because we I, I thought about it the other day we could have just released a very hacky module one but then for module two and three we'd have to reinvent the wheel and redo it exactly again. It's exactly more work. so yeah uh, this is this is my opinion but as for the beta release and whatnot Motown might have more idea about this uh yeah so we don't have an exact uh, time frame on the on the beta but uh what we do know is that around the time that module three is complete uh will will be pretty close so all three modules will come out first and then we'll we'll get into beta talks all right and so is the beta gonna be kind of like the planetary yeah like the the pu the public universe in star citizen yeah it is it is a lot like that in the in the same uh development sense uh without without planets in space of course but uh uh <laughs> but yeah it, the the beta for identity will be the full world the, the whole open world that you'll be able to explore and and uh, what, interact what did, say, what did you say that technically the beta would have almost everything that the full game will have but just just more for testing purposes I think. exactly yeah we we really want the beta to be feature complete um because we we are adamantly against the whole uh, yeah yeah uh, the whole uh pre-release thing that people are doing on steam these days uh because you only get one one uh first impression you know <laughs> people you people exactly exactly people will we don't want people to play it once decide it's unfinished and then never come back so we, we want uh it to be complete enough that people will feel like they're playing a full game by the nice. time beta comes out okay by the time the full game comes out, yeah. for the last question um marshall asks marshall's on the discord he asks if there's a lot of people getting gas from gas stations without people producing oil, will the price go up or even run out? If not, that would be cool. <laughs> you want me to try and take this one? I think we answered that yesterday on the stream. Yeah, sure. Um, when I asked John about this, he said uh, that gas prices are mostly controlled by taxes, but there is a gas tax in addition to sales tax, so governors do have some control over this. Um, uh, but there is a cap. You can't make gas get uh, ultimately expensive or like super dirt cheap. There is like a range that you can adjust it. But uh, in terms of buying so much that it just runs out, I don't think that's going to happen. That would that's suck so if good. no players could get gas to power the, their vehicles. Yeah, and and there's also no there's no oil production in the game, so you're not really uh, supplying oil to gas stations. It's something that goes along in the back end. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, that was my last question. Cool. I guess we'll kind of just de-introduce ourselves. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, I'm with Motown, Beach Ball, and Cyber. Yeah, excellent finally getting to talk with you, man. I've, I've seen you follow Identity for a long time now. What, like, I think February last? Uh, oh, 17? Yeah. Like, your name has been, like, a continuous presence in our community pretty much since the beginning. Like, you know, I, I like, Everywhere we've gone on our forums or Discord, <laughs> Dragonfly has been there. Yeah. My name's oh, not even Todd, it's Austin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's yeah, cool to finally sit down with you, man. Yeah, I think I uh, I, I actually was the one that uh, mentioned you for uh, to yeah. came down to uh, 
uh, streamers that we need to contact because uh, you're the reason why I joined the team. Uh, I oh. was looking at uh, I was looking at the company in terms of like okay well what is identity and the very first video I saw identity is it a scam no it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And basically, basically, I watched your entire video, and that's when I uh, was curious about uh, what exactly is identity. And uh, you helped me go through that first initial patch, and you basically got me ready for my interview. So thanks Ooh. for that. Whoa! <laughs> nice. All right. I mean, that's all. That's crazy. But I, I mean, I've been AWOL for like a couple months now. When yeah, I it was school, you. It, it was you and your and your schedule. rival. Yeah. Dynasty. <laughs> Dynasty, actually, Dynasty and Cobra TV, all oh three of you help me get my job right now. So I have to thank you guys for that. See, I watched Dynasty and Cobra, but like me and Dynasty kind of had beef like for a little bit, but now we're cool. Oh, that's Our good. Our name is nice though. I, I like him. Oh yeah, I love his I love his accent. Like yeah, yeah. Power Gaming's voice. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in I'm in love with his voice. <laughs> I'm gonna awesome. end, I'm gonna end the uh, video now, but I still I I have to tell you guys something something crazy. <laughs> right. Sure.